I first dropped acid when I was 18. I was over at these people's house one night. This guy I went to school with was over there and asked me if I wanted to try some acid. I had read about it in the newspapers and heard a few friends talk about it, so I was curious. I was pretty jacked up on marijuana, so I decided to try it, and I dropped it. I don't know what I was waiting for, a flash or, or a rush or whatever, but I kept sitting there waiting and waiting and nothing was happening. So I got up and then went to the dresser and put on a pair of pink capris and a green and brown blouse. I thought the colors were beautiful. So we tripped down to Market Street and I decided to buy a hot dog. I had put mustard and ketchup and relish in the usual, and I put the hot dog up to my mouth, and somebody started screaming. I didn't know what was happening, so I looked up at my friend Terry and said, Did you hear that? Didn't you hear someone scream? He said no. I got the hot dog up to my mouth again, and I was ready to bite, and the scream got louder. And it hit me. No, it couldn't be. And I looked down at the hot dog and there was a face on him. Eyes, nose, a mouth. I had put the ketchup to where it looked like his hair. And he started telling me that I couldn't eat him. And he had a wife and seven kids at home to support. And I stood there with his hot dog and asked Terry, Do you know this hot dog is talking to me? And he says... Now, nah, let's get out of here. He thought I was just faking. And I told him, look at the thing. He's got a face. And he's screaming. And the guy finally looked over and he got on the same trip that I was on. And we sat there carrying on a conversation with that hot dog. Finally, I decided I was just hallucinating, so I put it in my mouth and bit down. <laughs> screamed so loud that you could hear it all over town, so I had to throw it on the ground and step on it. And I was jumping on this hot dog in the middle of Market Street. I realized that I had murdered it. screaming down the street, scared. in the New York City area, Anthony. 877-692-1027. Anywhere outside of New York City, including Anthony. Yes. Got to do it again. Buffalo, New York. Hello. Ah, Buffalo. I say Buffalo because they represented the Opie and Anthony show big time on WWF last night on Raw. Yes. Wow signs all over the place. Great. As they were trying to do their little TV show. So for Buffalo and anyone else outside of the New York area, 866-277-4WOW. That's 866-277-4WOW. Hi, if I was a hot dog, I sure wouldn't want to be in the hands of that 
strung out bitch. She bit my head off and threw me on the ground. <laughs> Hi. That was a poor hot dog. How could you not feel bad for a hot dog like that? <laughs> Probably bit right in and broke his big glass. <laughs> I love it. That was hilarious. That was an educational film, uh, kids. Yeah, we love them. Don't do LSD. See what happens? Hmm, jumping up and down on a hot dog. <laughs> she said she was jumping up and down on a hot dog in the middle of Market Street. Wow. Well, yeah. Whatever, whatever gets you off there, honey. We were, uh, we were show prepping today for the Opie and Anthony show, and uh, we came across some educational films. That one was on LSD. Very funny. We will be playing some others uh, as as the week goes by here. Drug ones are great. The drug ones are hilarious. The hot one. Barbiturates. One guy, one guy, the drug dealer looked like uh, Tom Hanks uh, <laughs> after he was stuck on the island for a little while. <laughs> you have the big beard going. <laughs> and the other guy was uh, the blonde-haired guy from Emergency. Was uh, as a kid. Was the young innocent lad. Yeah, he was the lad that they corrupted with their drugs. That uh, took a turn somewhere for the worse. For the worse. Had some uh, hot chick, uh, you know, flirting with him. Yeah, but trying to get him hooked on H. Because she was in cahoots with the guy. Like the plot line was the the Tom Hanks with the beard guy was trying to turn on all the uh, innocent kids. All the squares. All the squares. Take a trip from Squaresville. That's what he said. <laughs> right. Take a trip from Squaresville. You'll be gone, gone, and far out. <laughs> right. Like the the talk is is fantastic. But the square this. kids like, hey man, you know, I have more fish to hook. Yeah. More fish to hook. He can't be bothered with the drug scene. Mm -hmm. Well, he turned, man. Take a high ride to Kicksville. <laughs> That's what he said. Know what I learned? Kicksville. I want to go to Kicksville. Know what I learned during that educational film about uh, marijuana, Anthony? Or that was the one on H? That was on uh, LSD. Uh, that was the LSD that one was as LSD. well? That was LSD. The, uh, the good drugs are in the garage. In the garage. That's when they went to the garage where they could hide away from grown-ups and authority figures <laughs> and do their drugs and get strung out and high far gone. But they were doing the the drugs in the in the regular playroom there. Uh, you know, they were drinking. It was a typical house party, weren't they? Just drinking. They weren't smoking a little... Uh, no, they were drinking beers. Uh, and and uh, the guy from emergency was making out with the hot slut chick that was in cahoots with the dealer. Mrs. Like Robinson. Kissing. She was a little older. She was a little older. But they're kissing on the couch, and that's when she uh, gained his trust. Right. If he could only see the needle marks on her arm or her police record, he'd know to get far, far away from this scene. <laughs> that's what they were saying. It was great. So they talked him into going uh, in the garage for the good stuff. Yeah, and then uh, they, he went to the garage, and that's when he caved into peer pressure right. and took a trip to Kicksville. Kicksville. Kicksville? Isn't that out on Long Island? <laughs> right? That's by Mineola or something? That's Where is Hicksville? That's Hicksville. Hicksville. Oh, Hicksville. I'm sorry. Take a trip to Hicksville on the L I double R. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. We were laughing our balls off. And then the the one we we were really screaming out. We had uh, Mary and and we had uh, other girls like watching. Lee Lee was in there watching too. Yeah. And um, it was on uh, the, a chick's first uh, period. Yeah. How funny, man. This chick is like. They were talking about menstruation. She was like 12 years old, and her other friend was 12, but she was more mature. Right. Your friend is more mature than you. You might not get your time for another year or two. And then they said later that summer, and you see the same 12-year-old girl? She's sitting in the chair. She goes, Mother, I have something to tell you. And the mother just looks at her and goes, You're menstruating. You're menstruating. <laughs> she goes, How did you know? And we're all making jokes. Because the couch was white when you sat on it. She's sitting on a red couch. <laughs> Because <laughs> the cat's licking at it. <laughs> Dude, this, this cave was hilarious. Very funny. And then uh, the mother gives a demonstration of how to uh, put on the mo the wackiest contraption well, for a pad I've ever seen. Let's be careful so they don't dump out the yeah. uh, the feminine product there. It's a uh, modest feminine uh, napkins. Boy, they were a lot different back in 1958. Too damn funny. But there was she uh, gives the box to the daughter and it was like as big as a Nike box. It was like a Nike box. It was like a Nike sneaker box and I think there was one in there. There was one pad. She brings it out and she goes, "And here's the belt." And she picks up this belt. She goes, "You wear it under your panties." <laughs> And, and she shows how to put the pad on the belt. The short end, and like it's, it's like you're doing mechanics on a truck. The short end, and she is attaching the short flap end 
and then there's the big, thick, absorbent pad, and then there's another flap end that's a long end. Right. And she's putting it in this thing that looks like a paper clip hanging from the front of the thing, and then she puts the long end to the back. You know what it looked like when the mom had the contraption all And then she holds it up. It looked like a porch swing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It did. She picks it up and it was gently swinging the pad back and forth. And she goes, won't it leak? <laughs> no. The mother goes, no, it's made of absorbent material. You change it every three or four hours throughout the day. It was the best. It was hilarious. The best. Well, we're going to get more audio from uh, these tapes. Yeah. They're yeah. so much fun. Oh, my God. We were dying. We were dying. Now the boys can learn to earn their red wings at school. <laughs> now I'll tell you about crime scene sex. <laughs> oh, the simplest Italian guy. Oh, it's the most racist film I've ever seen. There's this Italian guy. He works at a bakery, I guess. Why not? And uh, his name is on the front of the store. You know, Enzo or whatever the hell it was. And he gets out and he paints and son. On, on the bottom of the window because he's having a little a bambino, as he says. A little a boy. And he paints and son, S-U-N. And there's people go, scratching their heads going, you spell son with an O. Ah, uh, with an O? Really? Like this dumb guinea, this right off the boat, ignorant guinea immigrant. And uh, he's all excited because the doctor comes over to deliver the baby in the baker. So he goes in the back room, and uh, and Enzo, whatever his name is, he, he's waiting, playing the accordion. He's all happy. Ring, ding, 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 ding. He's playing his uh, Italian music. The doctor comes out. First thing he does, lights up his cigarette. Oh, and boy. his he head is hanging. He's all depressed. Oh, boy. And, and the, the Italian guy's like, what's the matter? Is my Elizabeth okay? Is my bambino okay? Your baby's dead. It was, my, it was born dead. It was born dead. It had syphilis. <laughs> You and your wife have syphilis. Your baby died of syphilis. And then uh, the Italian guy goes to lunging for a bread knife to stab himself with it. <laughs> with the medical advancements today, we can cure syphilis. You must come down to the hospital with your wife and you'll be able to have all the healthy, fine bambinos you want. Great, great old politically incorrect drivel. I love it. Rick, could you give more audio? Yeah, we could. I mean, I know you're working on ecstasy, Dad. Yeah, Ecstasy Dad's got some great clips. But that whole scene with uh, the garage and the lady trying to get the guy from emergency hooked is hilarious. All you need is some of the narrators. Um, the rap right in the beginning about, when, yeah. when the drug dealer comes to the, the groovy car. When he says, take a ride to Kicksville. <laughs> yeah, the groovy guy comes to the car to try to turn him on. He goes, he's been away from town, but he's back. He do, uh, little does anyone know he was in prison. And the guy's like, looks like Tom Hanks with the beer. And back then, they blamed it on the parents as well. Yeah, they did. The parents, because the kid went home to because he had to study, and he went home to actually talk to his dad about certain things. But the parents weren't there. They left him a note. They weren't so, there for him. So he t And they said the parents weren't there for him. So he went to the party and had a good time. He wasn't going to be a square. He drank the alcohol and danced the night away. Besides, then went to the garage. Besides, you can't get hooked doing it one time. Yeah, that's what you got. <laughs> sure, you won't get hooked doing it one time, but I am Rock Quarry. That's exactly <laughs> what, they, what they, like. they sound like. It's probably the same guy yeah. that did the voice. I mean, it, it sounds like him. Well, the film's hosted by Troy McClure. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's the voice, dude. That's yeah. absolutely what they sounded like. Some great stuff. Let's go to Andrew. Hey, Andrew. Andrew. Hey, I'm sorry. I was eating something. <laughs> oh, that's all right. What's up? Was it uh, a hot dog with a face? <laughs> <laughs> hey, remember in grammar school when um, the cops would come to the auditorium and they'd, they'd show you all the drugs, they'd pull them out of a bag? That wanted you to do drugs after that. Yeah. They'd tell you, like, what everything did. This one will make you, you know, fast. This one will make you, you know, like, dopey, like, you're drunk. It was great. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they actually uh, brought a little briefcase to school. They thought they were doing the a good thing, it. but it was a commercial. Like, hey, if you want to be a little slower, a little faster, try yeah. this, try that. Want to forget about your parents for a while, try this. Great stuff. Cool. All right, Andrew. <laughs> Take care. Bye. And we learned barbiturates are more addicting than uh, H. Yes, more addicting than heroin. The kid's just sitting there uh, talking about his uh, experience with the barbs, the barbiturates. Because, sure, heroin's hard to kick with the nausea. What's this guy breathing so heavy for? I don't know. Hey, Frank. Yeah. What's up, Frank? Hey. 
Uh, hey, you guys might have struck all with this stuff. I was thinking back. This, uh, the hot dog movie, I, when I heard it on the radio, I flipped out. I had a flashback, maybe sixth grade, I don't know, fifth grade. They showed that movie. And from that day on, I was, that hot dog talks to the chick, and I remember, like, you know, goes to the floor, there's mustard and ketchup on the floor. Well, what it was. Out, runs out. I want, ever since I seen that, I couldn't wait to try that drug. <laughs> yeah, didn't it seem like a pretty cool drug to try? Oh, I was like, oh my God. Wait, there's something you can take that makes a hot dog come to life? Oh. I mean, and I did. I was looking from that day on. I mean, I tried that before I uh, even smoked weed. <laughs> right. Isn't it great? I, I wish I could find it today. All right, Frank. Thank you. Thanks. Good night. Bye. The, the uh, picture that they showed during that, that woman eating the hot dog was a little troll doll in a bun. Yeah. And it had a face. <laughs> I threw it to the ground and jumped on a hot dog in the middle of Market Street. I named him George Glass. George Glass. <laughs> That's what the voice was, right? I, it's George Glass. Right. I bit his head off. <laughs> Jenny, what's going on? Hey, oh, hey. What up? What up, man? Listen, if you think that stuff was weird from your end watching the movie, you should have been wearing that stuff. I'm dead. It was that weird. You wore the porch swing? Oh, baby. I mean, it was like having oh. a diaper on. Really? And here I am, 11 years old now. When you were 11 years old, you were still trying to learn how to throw the baseball over the top of your house. Yeah. Mother, you know, or your friend. And I'm like, Ma, what is this? And, uh, you know, like, she pulls out the conception. Oh, Jenny, you're, yeah, your phone is really bad. Call back if you get a better line. Yeah, the old, uh, it's the old gear they used to have to wear, Opie. Big harness. belt and harnesses and clips and clips and yeah. tape. You're and clipping things on. It's just pulling uh, things through loops, through the uh, paper clip like loops to hold it. The short end and the long end. You know what? Someone's got to start taping what goes on in that back office because the comments we were making. <laughs> yeah, we were having a lot of fun back there today. That's for sure. <laughs> The, the chick was having the mother-daughter, uh, you know, talk. Oh, discussion. And she was all bummed because she was starting to menstruate. Menstruation. And we were, like, doing the dialogue of what the mom should say to the daughter. <laughs> this is when you're going to learn to give hummers. hummers. Don't worry, Susie. During this time, <laughs> right. that's why sometimes it's called a period. That's what she was saying. Because it's there a certain time every month. And then the girls are at the pool, and one girl comes up, and she goes, Oh, you're talking about the curse. <laughs> and the girl's like, oh, I'm called the curse? The curse, or when we feel bad. Oh, the man. The curse. Frank, what's going on? What's up, guys? Hey. Hey, Aunt, why does your narrator voice sound like Bob Murphy doing a Met game? No, Bob Murphy's like this. Well, Bob he was Murphy's like a young Bob Murphy. Very clag nose. It's just things like a high fly ball deep to center field. That one easily caught you in the ending. Oh, wait, it's a home run? <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta play the clip now. <laughs> Can we get that clip? The bag by Andy going back. It, it's gone. A home run. A home. Oh, wait, he caught it? <laughs> All right, guys. Take it easy. Clueless. All right, Frank. <laughs> we gotta get the Kicksville line. Got yeah. to. Kicksville. Tim, what's up? Yeah, listen, guys, I uh, I took a look at the map. Yeah. And uh, Kicksville is right next to Baja, California. <laughs> can you get tortillas there? Absolutely. If you take enough acid, you can get anything you want. Well, they dodge you. All right, Tim. Thank take you. Take care, guys. All right. Uh, here's Bob Murphy uh, screwing up a call, Anthony. Yeah, let's listen. The Mets announcer. The pitch. High fly ball. It keeps the left center field. It's way back. It may be playable. And my Yanni can't get a play. It's gone. A home run. Oh, he caught it. He, he caught it at the wall. I thought, sure, he was unable to reach it. <laughs> it's caught by Hag and I apologize. He was way out there, and it didn't look like he had a play on it. But he caught it against the wall in left center field. That just tells me he he does he it's can't say. He, no, no, he can't. Mr. Magoo. That was a high fly ball deep to center field. It looks like, yes, he caught it. The end of the inning, we can now go. Oh, wait, the lawnmowers are out there? The game isn't started yet. <laughs> Wait, I'm in my backyard? <laughs> Guy can't see. My day off? What, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> Mike, what's going on? Hey, guys. Hey, yeah. Mikey. Hey, uh, I got, uh, if you think those uh, are uh, pretty silly videos, the healthy ones, try watching a Navy video. Oh, uh, yeah, I got some Navy ones from the uh, 60s and 70s. Oh, yeah, well, well this, this one that I'm th thinking of was called the first 72 hours, like, kind of like a day in the life of a new recruit reporting on board a ship. Yeah. And, like, he... 
that, that they're like you know, first they show like that no one is uh, is waiting for him at the quarterdeck, and he gets into the wrong crowd, and he goes out drinking all night, then he winds up going to Captain Mess and get kicked out of the Navy at the end. He and gets like kicked out. And dope. Yeah, he gets kicked out because of drinking, and he's you know, doing drugs and the whole bit. So, but just like the whole narration, you know, it's just like oh my god, and and, and me and the guys are just like cracking up laughing, doing our own little comments and stuff too. Yeah, it's kind of like you, you, you're forced into a Mystery Science Theater 3000 kind oh, of uh, thing when you're watching these at your buds because it's just too funny. you got to oh, goof is, on it. Oh, it's hysterical. It's hysterical. That's the only way to pass the time with some of these pathetic videos. Yes, sir. It, 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 it's, it, it's great, guys, to hear you and uh, keep up the great, great job. Uh, thanks, Mike. No problem. Thank you, guys. Just keep your fingers crossed because rumor has it we're going country. <laughs> country. Uh -oh. John from D.C. Uh, brought up that SNL commercial parody. Have you seen it? No. It's uh, called um, Kotex Classics. And they do a whole thing on uh, them bringing back the belts in the pants. And the girls are wearing these tight, slinky dresses. And you just see these big bulges of the pad, <laughs> the belt. You know how girls wear their thongs kind of pulled out of the top of their pants? Yeah. The big white belt is coming out of the top. <laughs> it's hysterical. It was one of the funniest uh, SNL commercial parodies I've ever seen. Classic. Really good. I stand alone. We're back with the Opie and Anthony Show. Oi! Talking about those educational films we all saw growing up. Sex, drugs, safety, uh, venereal disease, all kinds of fun stuff. And uh, you know what it reminds me of, too? Remember, when we first started talking about this, I can't even remember, I think right when we came to New York, and Opie brought up the fact that when he watched one of these films <laughs> uh, as he was a kid, uh, what did he do? He ran home and climbed up a tree and wouldn't come down. <laughs> the apple tree in the front yard. Yeah, yeah. You were so embarrassed by the content of the sex film. Well, you know, it was the, uh, the famous scene in, I guess, sixth grade grammar yeah. school is about when it goes down. And they separated the, uh, the boys and the girls. You knew something was up. Yep. You're not stupid. You know something is going to... Uh, someone is going to eventually explain what the F is going on, you know? Maybe there's hair growing on your body where exactly. there was no hair before. You're getting urges. Exactly. So they're talking about how your 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 thing is going to be functioning differently and you're going to be growing stuff. These are from hormones that are being pumped from certain glands. In the male, the testes pump out testosterone. In the female, it's the ovaries pumping out their hormones. So, you know, I'm digging the film. I'm like, all right, I can handle this. You know, they're trying to, they're explaining why you get acne and, and how you're going to have to start shaving right. and all this stuff. And then... Um, Hygiene, very important at this time. Matter of fact, you know what it was? And it was Washington Drive School in Centerport. And yeah. uh, they, uh, they put us in the gym, big folding door. Oh, yeah. To split the gym in half. Girls on one side, boys on the other. When you'd hear that motor fire up to close that big door. <laughs> Right. Like lockdown. And uh, at the end of the film, they turn the gym lights back on or whatever, and uh, the teacher uh, pretty much uh, tells the entire gym that uh, your parents have been uh, informed that you may have questions about the film you just saw. Oh, no. So now I'm thinking, I'm not going home and having my dad talk about sex with me. Yeah. I just don't want to deal with that yet. Very scary. So I, I ran home from Washington Drive School and, and proceeded to climb the apple tree, Anthony, and I would not come down for dinner. You wouldn't come down for dinner because you were afraid. <laughs> and Dad, my dad comes out to try to talk to me from the base of the apple tree, and I'm yeah. way up high. And I'm like, Dad, I am not coming down so you could talk about Mom's boobs. You are afraid? No. To talk about sex with your parents. Well, that's fine. I'd rather uh, learn it from the streets. Right. Where, where it's, it's supposed to be learned. Yes. Now, I remember years ago, man, uh, Pee Wee Herman played a clip of one of those uh, films on um, that HBO special he did, which was pretty much the prototype show for Pee Wee's Playhouse. 
and it showed the kid with hygiene brushing his hair in the bathroom and being polite in the cafeteria. I've always uh, thought these things were great. Right. Well, we got a bunch of health teachers checking in. Uh, Kathleen, what's going on? Hi, how are you guys? I'm a really big fan. Oh, thanks, Kathleen, Thank the health teacher. Yeah, well, I had a kid the other day just freak out totally on the whole subject of um, men menstruation and getting the period, and he was like, you mean me? He could not handle it. He had like 40 questions, and one was just louder and more panic-stricken than the next. Well, blood, very scary. <laughs> Very scary. And the film we watched, uh, they said that uh, you ladies will only uh, see. I don't know what they're gonna. Do. They're only gonna uh, flow a little bit. Yeah, just, just a, a bit. Just a little bit. I'm like, oh yeah. Well, they just. So this kid, it. this kid, like, got up out of his chair and he pointed in this girl's face and he says, "You mean she could be." Bleeding from that area right now, <laughs> and the whole class fell apart, and it was just unbelievable. I was like, listen, you have to come and see me or one of the other health teachers after class, because we'll, end, we'll get your questions answered, but just right after calm you, down. Right after you show that film, you should have a seminar on uh, Hummers for the, all the young ladies. Right, ladies. how they could maybe <laughs> please their man during this hard time. Right, well, I'll... this is only junior high school. Maybe when we're they gonna... go to high school, they could learn that. We're going to get through this. We're going to through... <laughs> keep, keep your chin up. Keep your chin up. We're going to turn this thing around. We're going to turn this thing around. All right, Kathleen, thank you. You're like, welcome. Have like a good day. The, all right. Bye. I like how the mother was describing it to the daughter when she said, the, your, your womb makes a warm, comfortable place for a baby to grow. And if, and if this isn't used, it has to be removed from the body or it, it leaves the body. Yeah. This is your period. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's scary. They try to make it sound like it's uh, not, it's okay. A warm, Everyone's comfortable right. place. It sounds like she's going to be expelling a den. Right. You know? Please. Let's go to Maggie May. Hello. Hi. Wake up, Maggie May. I'm up. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? <laughs> wah, wah. I know, I know. Hi, guys. Yes, we can, we can oh, hear you. I wore the September porch swing. I, really I want should be you back to know. School. What? I used to wear the porch swing. You did? What they didn't tell the 11-year-old little girl is that she should cut down her pubes because it used to pinch us. It was, in fact, like a paper clip. And your pubic hairs would get caught inside of it, oh. and you'd be sitting in class, and it's pinching and pulling, and you're sitting wow. there in yeah, you a know class, something? and it was horrible. It was just horrible. I think you're absolutely right, because uh, back, <laughs> yeah. back then, back then they, <laughs> they didn't uh, really, they were into yeah. the 70s Earth Mama Muffs. The big yeah, it was 70s. was an elastic band yeah. with two giant paper clips, but the paper clips had teeth and would bite you. Ah, they had teeth! I thought only the hot dog uh, bit. Yeah, <laughs> the hot dog. All right, Maggie Mae, thank you. Wow, imagine that a girl just sits down and goes, ow, and you knew. The you knew. People picking up on the porch swing reference. I like it that. It looked like a porch swing. James, what's going on? Hey, Owen, hey, what's going on, man? Hey, bro. Uh, yeah, we were in the dormitory. We were like sixth or seventh grade, and we found a box of this stuff. Yeah. We didn't know what it was. We are looking at it, looking at it. So we're, one of the guys was pretty... Uh, Smart. He puts it on his head. We still we took the adhesive. We glued a bunch of the pads on it like a mohawk. <laughs> so each of us followed. There was like five of us running around the gym with these maxi pad mohawks on. That <laughs> looked cool. Yeah. Look cool. See, but even I went those... to Catholic school, so it was worse. The nun comes in. She's like, "Get those off your head." That's funny. Even those were the newer ones with the adhesive. Can I say something? Else? Yeah. He made me get the syphilis. And a man in my position cannot afford to be made to get the syphilis. Syphilis. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> oh, <come laughs> right out. You look ridiculous. And the Pee Wee Herman film was uh, people are writing in, Mr. Bungle. Oh, okay. Don't be a Mr. Bungle. They had a kid... Uh, Sitting down, and uh, he he didn't uh, he didn't let the girl sit down first. You know, no manners. He was talking with his uh, mouth full, bad posture. He was a Mr. Bungle. Guess that's where the band got the name. Nice, Susan. What's going on? Hey, I was calling to know that the newest Hello, film. Hello, Susan. Huh? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, go ahead, Susan. The newest film out. I'm a special ed teacher for the girls getting their period. It's yeah. worse than the one years ago. I, uh, I was laughing so hard in the back of the room I could hardly show it. They actually oh, hold on, hold on. 
I, you know, hold on, because I don't know what they're going to dump out of, so let's just get rid of that word for now and just say the, okay. the, the, the lady's time or whatever, okay? Michael. All right, so you got the latest film? What they that did, the latest, in, in the latest film, they do a sleepover, and the girl, you know, has it happen the next morning. The mom's explaining it to her. Yeah. yeah. And she shows her in pancake batter. She takes the pancake batter and goes, and these are your, and shows the whole diagram in pancake batter. These are your, what, like ovaries? Yeah. And, and she, these are the fallopian tubes that makes this whole pancake batter thing. What, was she putting it on a griddle? Yeah. That she just, uh, oh, she pours like the pancake uh, crap the on the counter and then the and makes a diagram? I like mine with syrup. <laughs> like she was, was cooking. It was because I was seven months pregnant when I had to give this class so the kids are asking questions, had met my husband. Oh, wow. And they started asking real specific questions. Yeah, like how big is it and stuff, right? Yeah, it was, got a little too weird for me. I was like, all right, name's out of here. That's classic. All right. Yeah, but that, the, the new film is even scarier than the old one. Well, send all your films into the Opie and Anthony show. I want to uh, see some of the new ones. We have been talking about this subject for many years on our show, and now it's you know it's time to play a lot more of these things. Right. We've played some in the past, but I, I'm hearing there's one that the Navy uh, the Navy has been showing uh, how to stay away from the homos. Yeah, yeah, oh, you yeah. don't want to be a homo in the Navy. My husband's Air Force, and the, the ones in the Air Force are even scarier. There's an anti-homo Navy one from, uh, I guess, the, the 60s. Cool. All right, Susan, thank you. You guys are great from D.C. Uh, we're trying. We're going to be down there a week from Friday. All right, we're here. All right, and a week from Thursday in Philly. We're doing a little road trip. I also got some uh, that i got to bring in um, concerning atomic safety. <laughs> Which are really funny. <laughs> Duck and cover. Good boy, Jimmy. Yeah, cause Ew. He, he's riding his bike. This is hysterical. He's riding his bike on the side of the road, and all of a sudden, <laughs> this huge flash. And Billy, like, jumps off his bike. Jimmy jumps off his bike, and they get right in the where the curb meets the road. Yeah. In the gutter, and they duck and cover up their heads. Good boy. And that's supposed to protect that's them. That's going to save their asses. That's going to save them from a Duncan nuclear cover. fallout. That's good. <laughs> uh, Seth, you're next on the Opie and Anthony show. What's up? How are you doing today? All right, man. Great show. Great show. I'm listening for a few years now. Thank Love it. you. Um, I was in elementary school, Sunrise Drive Elementary School, and the Long Island Railroad came to our school. I know this is not like the health videos or whatnot, but they wanted to scare us from not playing on the third rail or not playing on the tracks when the trains would come. Yeah. I don't know if you ever saw that. You guys grew up on Long Island. Of course. And they did one scene where all of us are like in sixth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. We're all sitting there. This guy gets up and he goes, my name is Gino Montana and I'm from the Long Island Railroad. And this is what happens when you play on the tracks, on super, whatever, unsupervised. And they showed a picture of a kid standing in front of one of those old Long Island Railroad trains. Yeah. And all these kids are screaming and crying. No, 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 don't let it happen. Next thing you know, they show another slide of guts, and like it's like cow guts. But we don't know. We're in sixth grade. All oh, right, they're trying to scare you, yeah. Crying and screaming and whatnot, and well, now I can't go on trains anymore. So hey, what the hell? All right, thank you, Seth. Well, here's, uh, speaking of train safety, there's Samantha from Philly. Has a cute little story. This sounds like a great Twilight Zone episode, <laughs> but it was a train safety movie. Um, one kid, they show one kid uh, throwing a rock at a passing train. One walking the tracks gets her foot caught in the rails. One is uh, gets his kite stuck in the electrical lines by the tracks and climbs up to get it and uh, was uh, on his bike and tried to beat the train. Of course, they're all killed. Then they're forced for the rest of eternity to sit on this train and ride this, like, hell train together. There's one kid that was with the kid with the kite, and uh, he didn't die, but he's forced to go on the train to see what happens to kids that do stupid things on the train. And then uh, at the end... They, uh, the kids on the train, on the hell train, yell at this kid to get off the train and warn the other children what it's like if you do something uh, concerning a train and die. So they tell him to get off the hell train, and he goes and runs and tells his friends how awful it is if you die in one of these train things. But that's, that's like, horrific. I, that's some of the little hell children for eternity riding the train. Man. Scary. <laughs> I love them. Oh, wait. Mike saw the, uh, the atomic safety film. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, guys, I saw the atomic safety film. Yeah. They tell you to run away from the flash when you see one. Yeah. Yeah, you could outrun a flash <laughs> from a run nuclear blast. away from the flash. <laughs> nice. Good boy, Jimmy. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to listen to Anthony call me a tool on the radio. Yeah, we might not, though. No, see? Now you're going to be waiting and waiting because I won't say it. Oh, okay. Uh, let's go to D.C. Eileen, what's up? 
Hey, you know, I just wanted to say I saw the Cortex Classic um, Saturday Night Live skit too. It was just like my junior high. Those things used to slip out of the belt, and you'd see girls walk around with those things sticking up out of their pants. Oh, I feel bad. How for embarrassing. You, At least they figure that out, huh? Yeah, you think so, but man, they would ride up, and you'd see these girls with like tails like deer. I would say the tampon, <laughs> probably like deer, like a white tailed deer. <laughs> the tampon, <laughs> probably one of the greatest inventions of the 20th century, would you say? Yeah, yeah definitely. I would. Yeah. Especially that OB with no applicator the, OB, the designed by a woman gynecologist. The comments we were coming up with, man, because uh, this film was from 1953, I believe. Yeah. So I go, to, and, and it was a whole educational film on menstruation, and I go to Aunt, you know what all these ladies have in common today? Uh-huh. They don't have to worry about menstruation anymore. Why? Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're all old women now. We were just idiots. And the old school teachers talking about this all in right, some of the films. Eileen, i got to cut you off because Rick has found... Four more clips from um, the educational films we were watching. Wait, which today. ones are these from, Rick? Is it the drug one? Uh, wait, uh, explain, because we get we get a whole new audience every 15 minutes. This was a little uh, film about uh, drugs and how how you shouldn't get involved with the drug scene. And it was made. It looks to be in the um, I guess 50s. That was 58. 58. The the blonde-haired guy from Emergency. Remember him? He was a kid. He played the kid in this. Let me see, Rick. Number three. Number three. Yeah. Narcotics, pit of despair. Pit of despair. So he goes to one of these uh, groovy parties to get high and far out. Not be a square, because that's the last thing you want to be. And he goes to this party, and he's coaxed, Opie, into um, partying and drinking. And he meets this girl at the party, but he doesn't know the girl's in cahoots with the drug dealer guy. And she's a heroin addict. Right. And she gets him on the booze, and they're kissing, and then she invites him to go to where it all happens. The garage. The garage, Opie. <laughs> it's where they are all huddled around in the garage smoking reefer and doing Benny's, Dexies, and other drugs. Reds. Reds. <laughs> Goofballs. Goofballs. <laughs> Barbiturates. I'd want to do goofballs. That sounds fun. Know how many people emailed Roy DeSoto is his name. Know how many uh, people emailed us saying, what the F is a barbiturate? Barbs, man. That's well, well, now they go by brand names. Barbiturates are nothing but, you know, downs. Ludes. Uh, Quite well, Lude. Vicodins. Things like that now would be your... Your uh, barbs and amphetamines are your uh, ups, your uppers. All right, man, relax. Uppers, downers, Benny's, Dixie, <laughs> meth. So here's a clip from that film. To John, it seems perfectly natural and innocent to bump into an old classmate. He hasn't seen guy. Pete since he dropped out of school Pete. last year. From the looks of him, he seems to be doing well on his out-of-town selling job. Ah, out-of-town selling job. The guy looked like Tom Hanks. From uh, Castaway when he had the beard. But, but the beard. He looked like Tom Hanks. But he had this big beard and he's kind of, you know, scary looking. It's just an old friend that uh, he bumped into. And, and he'd have been he'd been out of town out on of a town. selling job. Yeah, he's doing well for yeah. himself. The music's classic. What John doesn't know is the selling job is pushing dope. And the long absence from town was spent in the state prison. <laughs> <laughs> Their accidental meeting calls for a little celebration. Yes. And Pete has just the thing. There's a little private party going on tonight. Plenty of fun and laughs. Take a break from the books and live a little. Yeah. It sounds good, but today's his father's day off, and John needs his help with some school problems. If there's another party sometime, maybe he can make it then. But Pete isn't interested in some time, maybe, or squares. If you want to swing, call him. Right now, he's got to split. He's got to find fish ready to be hooked. Victims to supply him with money for the heroin he needs today and tomorrow and tomorrow. <laughs> he goes and speeds off in his roadster. <laughs> sure. He doesn't have New time for squares. Fish, fish to get hooked. <laughs> it's like, you, you know, as a kid growing up and, and seeing some movies that were very similar to this one. Yeah. I thought it was going to be impossible to avoid drugs. I really thought, like, it happened like this. Like, they roped you in. I never thought it was like it really is. You're walking in school, maybe someone you know or your friend or something goes, Dude, you're smoking a joint? I'm like, nah. 
or okay, whatever it is. It wasn't this big you had plan. More, you had more of a choice when it came down to it. Yeah, it wasn't like, I have to hook this fish. <laughs> right. Like, this poor guy is setting this up like he's setting up a crime worth billions of dollars. Like, they're going to tie him down and yeah, yeah. force feed him. Like, they're kidnapping an executive son or something. You know, they, is, uh, just ask him, does he want dope? Right. The guy could have sold it to him right there. He does it, you sell it to him. He doesn't, you go, ah, all right, well, come to the party. And we got some audio from the party. Oh, the groovy bash. Yeah. John, the party is swinging. Just the thing he needs to pep him up. <laughs> the stage is set. The principal players are in position. The curtain is up. But he has just been cast as the star fall guy in a real-life tragedy. <laughs> That's great. That is classic. So there's a whole scene. It's, there's the chick, the drug dealer, and some dude, right? Dude, this party is set up for the benefit. Because all I could see was he was the only square and new fish that was at the party. All the rest of them are doing the drugs and everything else. So this whole party was choreographed just to get him hooked on dope. Yeah, that's how it happened. It, 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 exactly. That's exactly how it happened. More from the party? All right. Yeah. yeah. The exertion of the dance, the excitement of Helen, and several beers have taken effect. Inhibition and caution are forgotten. When Helen suggests they have a few more beers, he's all for it. Why not? Everyone else is doing it. To refuse would be square, and that must be avoided at all costs. <laughs> Besides, he's never been high on it before, and he never will. Mm -hmm. He can handle the stuff. Sure. Of course. <laughs> he can handle the stuff. He's never been high. Which one is this? Oh, Squaresville. Squaresville. All right. They go to the garage. The next step is the garage. Yeah. There, some of the gang are really blasted. That's where the real action is. Yeah. Come on and take a look. Oh, take a trip from Squaresville. Live a little and see what it's like for yourself. The senses are dulled just enough to be reckless. Helen, the music, the beer, the promise of excitement press in on him. And oral film. Now, curiosity has to be satisfied. And why not? It can't do any harm to look. Of course it can. <laughs> but you know, it does. Because he turns on, doesn't he? He turns on. He gets hooked. He gets groovy and high. He's no <laughs> longer a square. No, he's with it. The music is classic, isn't it? Soon he'll be dropping out of college. Right. And teaming up with another guy to do a radio show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rick, you got to go get more clips. This has got to be an underlying, you know, thing that kind of, kind of, kind of weaves its way yeah. through the show today. Where's Kicksville? Yeah, what happened to Kicksville? Happened to... Was it? Oh, we heard Kicksville. All right. I you love got Kicksville. get the clips from the uh, the menstruation. Yeah. I want to hear her talking about the porch swing, the porch swing, the description of how to put it on. And then when she walks in the house and her daughter is having it and uh, she goes, Mom, I have something to tell you. <laughs> You're, You're menstruating. menstruating. I want that as a clip on my machine here. <laughs> that way if a girl calls and starts being bitchy, I can hit the button. <laughs> You're menstruating. You're menstruating. <laughs> All right, well, the phones have exploded today. Yeah. Oh, yeah, people have uh, Tommy here. we got to get to him. He saw the Beware of Homo's Navy tape. So Maybe he can enlighten us on that. And line two, Mike, O and A, ever see testicles and you. Testicles and you. <laughs> Classic. Oh, we're going to have fun today. Also, uh, stepping off the curb video in fourth grade. I saw a Hamburger on the Highway, which was a good one. Yeah. That was... Uh, uh, safety film about driving when you're first getting your license. They show you clips of burnt up people. I remember the, mo the most impact, the one that impacted me the most was an old pickup truck, and it was a guy that had hit something. The truck burst into flames, and he was uh, drunk. They found out later he was drunk. But they open up this burnt up door, and you see his burnt almost skeletal body leaning over the steering wheel. I was like, I'll never drink and drive. And then that night, you know, I got a few beers with my friends and piled into the. They would always, the driver ed classes would show you the death pictures all. The oh time. yeah, the, the, like j jaws that were just removed from people that went through the windshield. Yeah, they, all that crap. Show you all that fun stuff. <laughs> Yo, 
here checking out the Opie and Anthony show today. Oi. We don't have to give out the phone numbers. The phones are slamming today. Yes. Nice. Ah, uh, Russ, what's going on? Hey, what's up, man? I got a Mr. Bungle clip for you. Oh, you do? From uh, the old Mr. Bungle it's film. Right, it's right off the CD. They have it right on there. Really? So you want me to play it for you? Yes. All right. Here we go. Just before lunch one day, a puppet show was put on at school. It was called Mr. Bungle Goes to Lunch. <laughs> it was fun to watch. In the puppet show, Mr. Bungle came to the boys' room on his way to lunch. He looked at his hands. His hands were dirty. And his hair was messy. But Mr. Bungle didn't stop to wash his hands or comb his hair. <laughs> he went Bungle. right to lunch. Was he there? Then, instead of getting into line at the lunchroom, Mr. Not. Bungle pushed everyone aside and went right to the front. Mr. Aho, Mr. Gonna Get His Ass Kicked. Even though this made the children laugh, no one thought that was a fair thing to do. <laughs> They're laughing at him, Opie. Then, in the lunchroom, Mr. Bungle was so clumsy and impolite that he knocked over everything, and no one wanted to sit next to him. And when he finally knocked his own tray off the table, that was the end of the puppet show. Uh -huh. The children knew that even though Mr. Bungle was funny to watch, he wouldn't be much fun to eat with. He's going to grow up to kill you and rape that Mr. you. Mr. Bungle wouldn't have many friends. All right, Russ, this is giving me a headache. <laughs> Thank you, Russ. No. no, you cannot say another thing. <laughs> We're on to you. Let's go to Tommy, who saw the uh, Beware of Homo's Navy tape. Yeah, I was in boot camp, 18 years old, and they showed this tape about immoral people. Immoral. That, you know, you're many months at sea with the same sex, and don't fall into this trap. They just prey on you. And that these two guys, like, winking at each other, it scared the crap out of me. Like the homos will try to get you? Yeah, like, uh, you know, just because you're all frustrated and you haven't been with a woman in months. Ah, and, uh, so don't let that get worked up into becoming a homo. Oh, it scared. I, I was afraid to go to, to a ship. So watch out for the guys that are winking. And watch out for the guys that wear wizard hats and belong to cats and hats. Later, right. Mary. Uh, all right. <laughs> you better watch out or the homos will get you. The homos. That's what happens if you uh, are on a ship too long without women. Uh, Mike, you're next on the Opie and Anthony show. What's up? Yeah, that film they showed in Don Johnny Dangerously there, that the testicles and you. Oh, that was fake, though. Well, Mr. Yambag was working out and Betty Boop was shaking her little ass, and he exploded. <laughs> that was from Johnny Dangerously. Yeah, that your testicles can explode if uh, yeah. don't take He went back to law school. <laughs> you ass. <laughs> Thank you. Thank well, you, Mike. Bye. I knew that was a fake one. All right, we're going to get uh, more clips, and we'll get that on the air in a little bit here, Anthony. Yes. Let's get to the clips. More clips, Anthony. More clips. We love these. These are from um, the, f the fabulous 50s and 60s, I guess. They're instructing children on things like drugs, sex, bodily functions, adolescence. Puberty. Didn't you hate going through it just for the name of it? Yes, the worst name. I remember I freaked out when I was about, I guess I was about 12, 11 or 12, and I, I ran to my mother and I go, I think I have breast cancer. <laughs> Why would you say that? Because my, knee my knee-pees hurt. They hurt and they were like getting like bumpy. I've known you for eight years. You've never told me that. <laughs> I just, you might have had breast cancer. It just popped up. No, you know, I'm, I was a little hypochondriac. And, and uh, so what was the problem with your... My mother just your said... Sense of my, my, and they were, like, getting hard and stuff. So my mother said, no, you're, you're just going through... <laughs> puberty. Puber puberty. It involves the pubis. You need a, an echo when you say that word. Puberty. 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 I said, well, not just my knee piece, Mom. Look at my c <laughs> 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 
one of these days when we're when we're uh, feeling really silly on this radio yes. show, we got to do a whole segment on on words that just sound silly. Well, puberty is up there. Puberty would would be up there. Yes. Puberty. Okay. Hey, pubert. All right, Aunt. Yeah. So uh, we got some clips from the educational film. And which one is this now? Uh, being a girl. Being a girl. <laughs> being a girl. <laughs> is it? This is the men's. All right. And uh, do you have the description as the mom uh, explains to the daughter how to put the porch swing together? All right. Perfect. All Let's right. start with the first. The clip. girl is very. Um, she's, I guess, supposed to be 12. Probably. And she's the, the girl that isn't as developed a 12-year-old as her friend is. Yeah. So her mother is now telling her because... Actually, it started out where she's talking to her, her mother how she wants to wear this pretty dress. And the mother goes, uh, you can't wear that. Uh, and then she goes, well, my friend can wear this dress. She's worn it. And she goes, no, nope, your friend is a little more developed than you are. Oh. So she has to tell how girls develop at a different age. And, and then she figured she'd start to tell her about menstruation you know it must suck to be a girl where yeah. like your friends they get the boobies first and then your mom sits you down and tells you don't worry you'll get the boobies there are some girls out there that never get the boobies they never get the boobies <laughs> what well, are they there, are, there are guys that have to go in like the locker rooms at the junior high or whatever it is and and they got the little pipsqueak <laughs> the little clamshell yam bag with a not a hair on it and then there's you know Angry Big Jim Slade in the corner with uh, you know the big bush and uh, an anaconda, you know, and that poor kid's got to sit there. I was uh, with what amounts to a baby's binky. I was I was hung like an acorn in high school. No problem admitting it. I didn't. Oh, yeah. um, I know exactly what he's saying. I was on like five sports teams. It was ridiculous. I I pr I developed pretty much the the norm the av average age everything but i wouldn't shower i just i found that a little gay to be showering in in school it's not like you're playing goddamn football for the nfl you're going out after the game to a party or something i'm going home i got a shower there you know what i mean besides you don't want to show off your sensitive neeps i'm not showing off my neeps no that was a little earlier that was like i Did swear, you have a little 11 buds or 12 <laughs> it was like i'll explain exactly what it was like <laughs> It was like just beneath the uh, the uh, actual needy area. There were each one had a very defined, hard, like lumpy thing right underneath the surface, and it was the glands forming. <laughs> Were you, were you being felt up too much in uh, in high school there? No. Here's During me square dancing? Here's me explaining. Or my mother explaining. Mama, I want ninny. No. <laughs> didn't want ninny, Mama. I don't want my ninny. You must have looked ridiculous. No, you couldn't see that. <laughs> let, me, let me explain something to you, my friends. It was not visual at all. It was, you could barely feel them. But it hurt like they were sensitive. And it was like uh, there. Who had bigger neeps back then? You or the 13-year-old girls? <laughs> the 13-year-old girls. Like I said, and I will continue to say, there was nothing that you couldn't see. Of course. There was no protuberance whatsoever. Uh, uh, and I'm sure the listeners have heard you, Anthony. But if I press... And they will, and they will, uh, w and they will recite that back to you during... What do we learn tonight? If I press <laughs> and within weeks, within weeks, it was gone. Mm. It was gone. They are not still there. It was uh, just below the surface, and that was it. That's all. No, Alex, I cannot shoot milk. It was called going through puberty. My neeps didn't Pu hurt during puberty. that time. Opie, many men develop in and different ways. I didn't run ways. to my mom and say, I think I have breast cancer. Opie... People develop in different ways. Some people might have sensitive neepies. Others don't, but yet develop uh, into men down in the waist while they're 18. You might look like a baby's binky in the shower. <laughs> Your neepies hurt. It might look like a hairless little clamshell yam bat. Oh, very good. Well... You know what? Now we have to take a break, but our listeners will kill us. Ah, oh, they're so going to kill us. we got to at least play a few clips before we go to break here. So we got some uh, clips from Being a Girl. <sighs> What's the first clip about? Being a girl, of course. Let's Being go. a girl. 
All right. Feeling icky? Icky? All right. Nah, uh, you know what? what is it, Opie? God damn it, I what knew is it was it, A. It's A. Who switched it to B? It's always A. It's always A. Did someone switch it to B? Someone switched A to B. To B. Okay, is Positive. that what we're going with? Because we were using the same pot, the B Metro pot, earlier. So what are you saying, officially? Officially, it was B, and it was supposed to be A. <laughs> Everyone knows it's A at this point. I love when you make it official. Like we've, been, we've been on in Albany six days. Even <laughs> they know it's A. It's always A. It's always okay. effing A. But someone switched it to B. For whatever reason. Okay, thanks. A clip from being a girl. I think they do that just to annoy me, so I go through the whole, the, the speech three times a week. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, darling, that reminds me. I bought some flowers for tonight. Would you arrange them for me before the guests or how you do it so well? Mom, will it be okay if I take my bath first? I feel kind of icky. Oh, sure, darling. Are you still menstruating? A little. Did you buy the sanitary napkins for me today? Mm-hmm. They're in your bed. Now, you just go take a nice bath, and you can fix the flowers later. Uh, get that stink off you, bitch. <laughs> She's feeling icky. Maybe maybe a shower. I'm going to take a bath. I'm going to sit here like I'm sitting in tomato soup. <laughs> <laughs> take a bath. I feel, you know, icky. Now the <laughs> I'm on the rag, riding the cotton pony, Mommy. <laughs> now the bath tub looks like Lipton tea. Oh, God. <laughs> Take a bath. Yes, your pads are right up on your bed. Ugh. She just heaves them on the bed. There you go. Why does the audio suck so bad? I'd better change the sheets. It was horrible. All right, let's. Yeah, see. it is a little odd. It's Hopefully, not the much next clearer clip is better in the back office. Yeah, uh, a little crackly. All right, let's try another clip from being. All uh, right, being. Did you see that dress at the teen shop? What dress? The one that was pale yellow with flowers across here and a sash in the back. Oh, I know the one. Oh, Mom, could I have it? Here it is. Libby, where would you wear a dress like that? I'm as old as Jean, and she wears clothes like that. Oh, come here, Libby. Jean is more developed than you are, dear. You still have your little girl looks and shape. I know, but we're the same age. But you're two different people. Some girls grow up sooner than others. Some not till they're 15 or 16. Some not till they're 15 or 16. And some huh? bum the kid out. And some never get big neepies. <laughs> neepies. <laughs> Before you know it, a most important thing will happen. What's that? You'll begin to menstruate. <laughs> Do you know what that means? It means you can have a baby. That's right. So your body prepares for it. What do you mean? Well, your body makes a warm, soft place out of blood and tissue for a baby to grow. And when there is no baby, the body gets rid of this blood and tissue through the lower part of the body. That's menstruating? Uh-huh. And once it starts, it'll happen every month Never for a ends. period of a few days. That's why it's sometimes also called the period. Right. I don't know if I'll like it. No, you won't. Oh, I Libby. You said you couldn't wait to grow up. <laughs> it's called the woman's nightmare. And believe me, the men are going to want to find that soft, warm place. <laughs> it's a soft, warm place, all right. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, Libby. <laughs> oh, Libby. It starts and it goes forever and ever until you dry up like a prune, like your mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't that great? Yeah, one more before break. Still uh, the same uh, mother-daughter team here? Yeah. Libby. A Come on, let me show you. A clip from being a girl. Yeah. Come on, let me show you something. Hmm? I know, sanitary napkins. Go ahead and open them. I've seen them in my magazine. Would you like to learn how to use them? I... I just, I got to explain. Yeah, the box is as big as a Nike sneakers box. Huge. Huge, <laughs> just laid on the bed. It says Modest on them. And, and, and they're just these giant, these, she brings out these giant pads. This is the, uh, what we described earlier as the porch swing. Yeah, and then she brings the belt out and shows how it uh, goes together. And it looks just like a porch swing. Yeah. Guess I'd better. All right. You'll need this sanitary belt, too, to hold them in place. 
It goes around your waist under your panties. Yeah. Then you put the short end of the napkin what? through the front fastener. The front what? And the longer end through the fastener in the back. See? But won't it leak through? No. The napkin absorbs the menstrual flow. <laughs> napkin? Napkin. The pillow. It's not a na Yeah, why are they calling it a napkin? <laughs> it's a pillow. It's exactly, it looked like one of those airplane pillows they <laughs> right. give you. You can't put your head on a napkin at night to get a good night's rest. It's a napkin. Yeah, like a neck brace for when people have whiplash. <laughs> you slap that on the back of your head. All right, we have more clips, but we definitely have to take a break. Unbelievable. Mm. That's right, darling. It looks like diarrhea coming out of your... <laughs> <laughs> And don't worry if it looks like salsa. Once you get hair around your <laughs> the cliffs might catch them and hurt. But it won't hurt as much as having your first big <laughs> Yeah, great. Uh, Jared? Yeah. What's up, buddy? His name is Jared. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Aunt John wants to know if you got your uh, period right after the nip thing. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, you tool. Hey, it's John, not I me. did not. <laughs> Go ahead, Jared. It's John, actually, from Cleveland. Oh, sorry, bro. Um, I have a daughter who's like eight years old. How does a single parent as a father go about explaining this to their kids? Uh-oh, dude. Do you, you, have you know a something? Or... Do you have a sister? Yeah, I have a sister. Yeah, have, have her aunt do it. you got to be ridiculous. You'll sound ridiculous. <laughs> you can't yeah, be doing that. It's like going down the aisle. What size do you buy them, you know? Yeah, yeah you gotta, you got to uh, tell your sister to take one for the team. Yeah, well, I hope she does it. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, thanks for the support in Cleveland. All right, you guys rock. Man. All right, cool. And a man in my position can't afford to be made to look ridiculous. 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 <laughs> We're having a lot of fun today. It's the O.P. and Anthony Show. Thank yeah. you for checking us out. Don't forget, whip them out Wednesday tomorrow. To be in it, you need that wow sticker on your car. Uh huh. Or a homemade wow sign for those cities don't, that don't have the bumper sticker. Roy, need a bumper sticker in the New York area. Self-addressed stamped envelope, 888 7th Avenue, New York, New York, 10106. All right? Opie, you were in a uh, fraternity, were you not? Bicycle, baby. There you go. Genesee, yo. Well, this doesn't sound any different than uh, any of the frat parties I've heard discussed by uh, fraternity members from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Members of Wake Forest University fraternity were charged with anim animal cruelty and abandonment after a drunk, dehydrated, and sunburned pig was found unconscious in a park. Ha-ha! 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 The 23 members of Sigma Phi Epsilon, the Sig Eps, yeah, Ugh. could be sentenced to 90 days in jail if convicted of uh, animal cruelty. Uh, animal control officers were called in when they found a 200-pound pig in the woods by a couple walking their dog. I wonder if she was part of the uh, Arethusa sorority, Anthony. A local reference? Tough. That made a lot of people in Geneseo laugh. Uncontrollably. Is she a sorority girl? I don't know. It just says the pig had been um, abused, was unable to stand, and the animal was drunk. Ha <laughs> ha! The pig reeked of alcohol. It could have easily died. I don't understand how someone could think it would be so fun to abuse a pig. <laughs> the dehydrated pig had uh, been burnt. Uh... At one of the parties, and drunk, uh, drunk, and was then just tossed to the wayside outside of... Uh, I guess you won't be going to classes uh, anytime soon. I guess not. Once again, another pig abused by a fraternity. Is this a... Now, all kidding aside, because I don't know, is it an animal or That's is it a sorority girl? The, that is the only goddamn reason I even read this, is because it really doesn't make clear if it was an animal or just maybe a girl that... 
wouldn't be uh, voted a beauty queen. Because mm. a lot of times uh, the frats go what they call pigging or hogging, right? You don't have to be in a frat to do that. I've heard of it. You know, frat guys are pretty uh, abusive with the girls. Well, it is a badge of honor, Anthony, to go pigging go. and to find the hottest, the hottest, the fattest. <laughs> oh, hogging, right? All right. <laughs> the fattest chick in the... <laughs> Oh, man. Someone told a story about you in a bar, wrapped around this big broad. You were so drunk Shut that up. you don't remember anything until you woke up, had a moment of clarity, and said, what am I doing hold with this on, big hold on, hold, on, hold on, hold on. What? I was just thinking that story in my head. I thought I'd never told that story on oh, air. Oh, no, no. I told that once? Me with the nippy story, never told on air. That one, I don't know if you told it on the air, but you told me. It, I was in uh, the Rat Skiller. In uh, in Geneseo, right? It's, it's it's no longer around. It was you know the Rat Skiller bar. Uh, it was actually in the basement of one of the dorms. Yeah, common thing. And that's where I met uh, uh, young Buzzy, Buzzy, who was, who was peddling. <laughs> drugs. He was peddling his drugs. <laughs> no, he was peddling uh, bootleg uh, Bruce Springsteen uh, videos back then. And Opie wanted to be cool. <laughs> that's right. And not a square. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I got so hammered. This is a true story. Were you on a one-way trip to Kicksville? <laughs> I was getting my kicks, all right. <laughs> Kicksville. I, 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 I was just a freshman. and Just uh, an innocent freshman. And I started, uh, I got wrecked. Wrecked. Yeah. Blind drunk. And I was uh, making out with this chick. <laughs> uh, and I guess I was making out in front making of Making out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was making out. Of course it was. Like Brewer says, you want to make out? You want to make out? You know, making out. Of course. Get a little older, you don't make out as much. You make out. You get right to the goods. <laughs> Screw that make out crap. Make in. I got I got video games to play. Make in with my... <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you yeah. a couple of kisses, but come on. Right, there you go. Play, make in. I'm playing Hot Shots 2 here. <laughs> Three, whatever it is. All right, anyway, so, uh, yeah, I was blind drunk. Hammer, dude. Mm -hmm. And I was making out with this uh, this girl... And uh, I, I guess I was starting to to sober up as, right. the, as the night went on. Uh -huh. And I'm starting to realize that a lot of people are are looking at me. They're just staring at you. Staring. And I'm and I'm think and in my mind at the time I'm thinking I have the hottest chick in the in, no no in the rat skeleton. <laughs> What to do? What to do? Right. You thought you did. <laughs> and my arms. I thought were around her. <laughs> he thought his arms were around her. And I'm I'm getting a little more sober and I'm realizing they are openly laughing at me. I'm like, openly what? laughing indeed. <laughs> Make a long story short. Ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it took me a long time to realize, but I was making out with a girl that had to be uh, close to 400 pounds, and I no, could not. No, no, no. And I could not get my arms oh my around her. What I thought was, oh, no. I thought my arms were holding uh, a real skinny chick. It turned yeah. out that my arms weren't even getting around to her back. Wow. Quite fat indeed. <laughs> You're one cool cat. <laughs> yeah, cool, all right. That's great. Get back to the being a girl. Uh, yeah, come on. Uh, audio clips. Being a girl. Little 12-year-old Libby on this uh, fine film from... From the 60s, I guess. Yeah, this is... Uh, Maybe early 60s. This is one of our favorite things uh, we've hit on over the years, these educational films. Yeah, I've had the collection at my house for a while, and uh, we've dug up some more for today. This is, this is uh, little Libby and Libby's mommy talking about Libby uh, growing into a, a woman. <laughs> and, and, on, and on a future episode of the Opie and Anthony show... Yeah. The educational film, Beware of the Homos. Beware of the Homos, the Navy film. That's right. Ow. All right, here's another clip with uh, Libby. Is the daughter? Libby's the daughter. Hey, Libby. Uh, You're menstruating. Okay, Libby and her mom. And Libby, see this blue polyethylene on the bottom Up and the side? Uh-huh. That's a special moisture-proof shield to prevent accidents. Uh -huh. Besides, you should change to a fresh napkin every three or four hours. What do I do with the one I take off? <laughs> no. You wrap it in toilet tissue or a paper towel and throw it in the wastebasket. Well, Libby, you rub it in your brother's face. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it's just so rough being a chick. You chicks have to change your pillow every three or four oh hours. Oh my God! These your pillow. Well, these weren't napkins. These things were. They like, were the big. Yeah. Like uh, like Rick said, the collars you have to wear after getting a little whiplash in a little traffic uh, accident. Did you hear how she was talking about the polyethylene barrier? <laughs> it's made from a space age polymer. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Oh. Got the big pillow with the big belt, and it's, she's just showing the the daughter how it fits on the belt, and then she holds it up, and it looks like a porch, porch swing. swing. <laughs> it's just gigantic, ridiculously gigantic, bulky thing. Libby, you look ridiculous. Libby, you can't afford to be looking ridiculous. Libby. All right, here's another clip. Being the girl. But mom. Suppose it happens at school or someplace where I don't have this. You look in the restroom. If there's not a napkin dispenser there, you ask the nurse or a teacher. Oh, and Libby, oh. I bought you this. It's a special sanitary panty you might yeah. want to try instead of the belt. The napkin fits right inside. Ooh. You might find it more comfortable than the belt. The elastic loops hold the napkin in place. Huh? What? Gee, Mom, they look just like my regular panties. Gee, thanks. Wow, we sure had some important talk. Wow, I'll say we did. Wow. Wow. Whip them out Wednesday. That's wow, right. I say we did. <laughs> wow. That's one important talk I'll never forget. It'll affect me mentally forever, Mom. Oh, Libby. <laughs> I've completely turned off to sex at any capacity, Mom. That's fine, Libby. <laughs> when your father's hammering his hard <laughs> into... <laughs> Into the warm, moist place made of blood and tissue. <laughs> that is the most horrid little speech about menstruation. <laughs> now, I, I guess the next clips we have is after Lil Libby actually gets it. The film shows uh, Libby sitting on a chair. She's playing her guitar. Is that and, the next uh, clip? No, this is the pool scene, right? Pool scene. Yeah, with her the friend. The pool. I thought that was after. No. Oh, she hadn't had it yet. Look at me, chronologically retarded. And now she, uh, she's she got some uh, inf uh, some news for her friend, I <laughs> Some think. info. Now she's going to the friend who already has it. Right. And another girl comes over who also knows what the curse is all about. All right, here we go. Hi. Right. How long? About a year. Do you? Do I want? Menstrual. Of course, Billy. How come you never told me? I don't know. I always felt it was kind of personal. And besides, it's nothing special. It happens to every girl. What happens to every girl? Womanhood. Oh, you mean the curse. What do you call it? The curse. You know, being unwell. <laughs> Why do you call it that? I don't know. Some people do. Hey, come on. Let's go swimming. No. You go. We'll be in later. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. 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 I don't want to be swimming in that pool. Oh, it's all going. Yes. <laughs> yes, Butters. The curse. You know, being unwell. <laughs> Sounds like what? Diphtheria? What the hell do you got? <laughs> you know, the curse. Being unwell. <laughs> I'm unwell. Go away. <laughs> it's made of blood and tissue. <laughs> You're unwell with the curse. Wow. <laughs> That is classic stuff, man. Now do we go to Libby and the mom again? And she's got a built-in flotation device where she jumps in the pool. Oh, forget <laughs> it. The pool level d go down two feet when it absorbs into that thing. I don't like those old <laughs> commercials. <laughs> yeah. How awful is that? She's got to go in the pool with that big thing. Ugh, it's like riding a, a one of those blow-up toys. <laughs> you put a horse head on it. Here's one with a blow-up horse head for when you go to the pool. That way they won't know you're unwell. unwell. You're unwell. Us guys don't have anything to be unwell about during that time. Yeah, it's, Except uh, for the fact you want to just hump everything like a <laughs> chihuahua. But I'm unwell. <laughs> All right, here's the mother back. She's playing the guitar. This? And it says, next summer. or or Yeah, it says, next summer. Um, if you're driving right now and you're speeding, slow down like five miles. Yeah, you might want to. Uh, you know, slow down about a five to ten miles because you might run off the road when you hear this one. Here it comes. Guess what, Mom? 
You're menstruating. <laughs> How did you know? I can smell it. Oh, I expected it. <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> All right, I guess. You don't seem, oh, quite as bubbly as usual. Bubbly? Are you sure you feel like bowling? I'm all right. Well, you're right, I guess. There's no need to mope around just because you're menstruating. But don't overdo. Hmm? Okay, I won't. <laughs> Mom, how'd you know? We had a, How'd you know? We had to throw away the couch. <laughs> you're menstruating. She knows. Just be careful. Don't overdo it, and don't get around any cats, whatever you do. They'll lunge at your little... <laughs> what an awful way. The, the little pause was great, because she's sitting in the chair, playing her guitar. Playing a guitar. The mother walks in, and she just goes, you know, Mom, guess what? And the mother looks. There's a long, dramatic pause. She looks with the look in her face like... My little girl is growing up, and then she just smiles because she doesn't want to. You know, there's nothing bad going on. You're menstruating. Just play that quick part again. Guess what, Mom? You're menstruating. She lost her little girl right there. Right there. You're menstruating. How did you know? The trail from the kitchen to the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. I went up to your bedroom. It looks like the Battle of the Bulge was fought up there. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> of course I know. <laughs> looks like your sister fell in a Cuisinart. <laughs> of course you're menstruating. I saw all the tissue. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, of course you're menstruating. It smelled like what we were at Coney Island, but we hadn't lived there in years. <laughs> of course. There's a beach within a hundred miles of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Here, take this Nike box of pillows upstairs and strap one on. <sighs> that is some great stuff. We, we got more, I think. Oh, God, Rick. No. No. No, no! You're menstruating indeed. <laughs> You're quite the cool cat. <laughs> oh, boy. How many more we got? Oh, let's cool. keep going. I man. love these. More clips from being a girl. Cringe education. People calling You'll it. You'll understand better if you know something about how you got to be a girl. So let's begin by examining the facts of birth. We should explain. I think huh? it's obvious to everyone. Uh, this is a whole different film. Oh, it is? Little Libby's Gone? I think that's it. Same, same, film, same, same film, but now it's in the classroom with, uh, ah. with the, uh, the, the you know, health education. The education. Yeah, no, right? Now, actually, each of you began life about nine months before you were born oh. as a microscopic living organism, mm -hmm. a single cell that resulted from the joining together of two other cells. Yeah. One from your mother and one from your father. This little cell found a safe shelter in your mother's body. Oh. In a soft, blood-rich organ called the uterus. Blood-rich. That sounds lovely. What happened in Buffalo? They dumped out of Buffalo? What? They're not hearing this in Buffalo? Went to commercials with that clip playing in the background, then commercials stopped and the clip was over. What the F? All we're getting is commercials. Buffalo is dumping out. The dickheads in Buffalo just played damn promo over the talk. What's going on in Buffalo? Stop it. Come on. They play this crap in schools. They better not be having a problem with this in Buffalo. Well, we're mm -hmm. getting along so well with Buffalo. Yeah. Trust me. If, if we have to dump out of this stuff, we got the guy. Yeah. It's a pain in the ass. Don't worry about if it. If he's not dumping out, it's okay. Tell Ben or someone to get on the uh, line with Buffalo and see if the problem is, uh, like, with them technically or what have you. All yeah. right, blood-rich organ, great. Anything else that's uh, entertaining? I don't like the teacher talk. What, you got something, right? Yeah. All the, all the of the body. All right, let's hear. 
course, you still have your little girl looks, but not for long. Uh, not for you long. You are approaching adolescence. Adolescence. A gland called the pituitary begins to encourage different parts of your body to turn into that of a woman. Little by little, each one of you growing differently in height, weight, and bone structure. Your breasts will begin to develop, getting rounder and fuller. Hopefully. Your hips will <laughs> fill out, taking on softer, more womanly contours. Ooh. And a soft growth of hair will appear under your arms and in the pubic area. Is that supposed to be your sexy? Your body will awaken internally. Awaken. And those organs that make you uniquely a girl will begin to develop, too. Nice. Release the Kraken. <laughs> Doesn't it sound like that? Did we unleash a beast upon the earth? She made it sound like every uh, woman's going to be a supermodel. I know. Like you come out of a pupa phase. <laughs> Crack open your old shell. Have big cans and hips. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Sometimes it don't happen, lady. <laughs> Look at Stalker Patty. Sometimes you get the huge hips and, and no cans. Stalker Patty's 45 years old. She still has that body of a 12-year-old that they're talking about. you like... When am I getting my hips and run, bruh? <laughs> Hi, teacher, it didn't happen. I haven't had it. Where's my womanly beauty I'm supposed to have? Get the body of an ant. Hi, my name is Stalker Libby. <laughs> I have the body of Libby. Patty, you're menstruating. Yeah. How did you know? <laughs> I saw all the dust. Oh, Buffalo's on the phone? Yeah, what's going on? Is what's this going the, on over there? the Godfather. Hey, man, Buffalo. Buffalo's on the phone, man. What the hell's the matter with you guys, man? We ain't cutting out of nothing. Well, we got a bunch of... Nah, uh, it was just an accidental trip. I don't know, something tripped the pot and it went off. That's 90 seconds later. Well, you just said the S word. I like to say the S word. Well, you're on the Wait air. Wait a minute. You can't. Wait a minute. We all just right. did there, Buffalo. Yeah, everything's cool in Buffalo, all right? All right. All right. All right. We're, we're just sure. getting to the bottom of it. We're not sure if you, you, you spilled the bats on the board or something. No, um, I didn't spill no bats on the board. I drink Budweiser, my friend. You love that bats <laughs> up there. No, I drink Budweiser. All right. Yeah, no, everything's cool, man. Just something just got tripped accidentally. Well, we, we were getting a little scared because we got a nice relationship going. You ain't got nothing time. to worry about down here. We don't believe ass. All right, cool. All, All right, right. Man. Thank you, Buff. All right, baby. There goes Buffalo. All right, baby. Buffalo represented the Opie and Anthony show last night. Huge uh, during WWF Raw, by the way. Tons of ONA wow signs. Yeah. All over the tube last night. Two more clips. Okay. There are two ovaries. Two narrow passageways called the fallopian cubes and the, and the uterus. Tunnel. And they're all surprisingly small. Mm. The uterus, <laughs> not more than the size of a pear. Fast forward. <laughs> the ovaries, <laughs> not more than the size of walnuts. Look at mine, it's fallen out. Then there's the vagina. Ooh. The passage from the uterus to the outside of your body. Gold! That's what they call gold! We struck us gold! Screw, the, screw what's going on inside. We just like that last section she was chatting about. There's gold in there! <laughs> and that's sick. Who needs to see the whole uh, Holland Tunnel? No! I just want to make sure it has a nice entrance. Just the entrance has <laughs> right. to be nice. The toll plaza. You just assume the rest is nice. The rest is nice. It's, you know, I ain't got to describe it or see it. I know it's functional. Look at the beginning of the Holland Tunnel. It's all decorated nice. It's all it gets you to and from. There's an easy pass lane right there. Sometimes you get in there and there's tiles falling off the walls. But you don't care. You don't care because the entranceway looks nice. Sometimes you ever uh, driving through and it's leaking on you. And they're like, where the hell's that coming from? The tunnel open. The tunnel. Yeah. And uh, you don't have to know. It's just serving its purpose. It it's doesn't getting matter because you, you saw the nice entranceway. Right. It made me feel good that the entranceway looked nice. It made me feel safe. Right. <laughs> that I was going into a nice place. <laughs> All right. There you Last go. Clip. Last clip. And more of the teacher. All right. As you approach your womanhood, mm -hmm. these organs begin to function. And your very first menstrual cycle begins. Yay. The ovaries release an ovum. A single egg cell 
which finds its way into one of the fallopian tubes. Very slowly, this little egg cell like travels through this tube Very toward slowly. the uterus. Mm -hmm. But before it gets there, the oh. uterus prepares for it, builds up a special lining of blood and tissue, tissue, so that this little egg cell can grow into a baby, if it were fertilized by a male cell. There's the thought. Sometimes, as in my case... The man you're with doesn't want it, and he'll punch you in the stomach repeatedly to dislodge this tissue. <laughs> Yeesh. All right. Get the pill in there. Get an IUD in there or something. Sometimes a condom is used. It could be rolled on with the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a pro. <laughs> Look at Rick. Look at Rick go with his sick mind. <laughs> Sometimes I'll finish in your A, like Meg, who's now dead. <laughs> wow, good call, Meg. Even though a nice place is prepared in the front, <laughs> that's not good enough for some of the boys. Sometimes people don't want babies, so they'll plow the <laughs> into a hot steaming batch of <laughs> is fired there. Safely away from any danger of making a little bambino. <laughs> but you can just clinch and walk to the fertility clinic. <laughs> where an unscrupulous doctor will take a turkey baster, suck it out, and put it in and make you pregnant. <laughs> I love it. Great stuff. We'll have more. We'll do this from time to time. I can't so. wait for a homo navy, though. Uh, be, uh, beware of the homos. Beware of the homos. Yeah. Navy clip. And other ones on the way. I'd say we're... Um, this show is like a trip to Kicksville today. <laughs> <laughs> we're not being square Don't today. be a square. We're in the middle of uh, Kicksville. <laughs> Don't be a square. It's the worst thing that can happen. This is the Opie and Anthony Show. Yeah. Uh, we have one more clip. That's right, Libby. We have one more clip from the educational um, films we were watching in the back room today, Anthony. Oh, yeah. We just had Libby and her mom talking about uh, menstruation. We forgot. Right. We, we found one more clip of Libby and her mom. The lost clip. The lost clip. <laughs> so, Rick, why don't we play that clip right now? Here we go. <laughs> Maybe now that you're a woman or growing into one, you're going to have to learn to keep your man with your new womanly organs and ways. Sometimes a man might want a little something extra than just straight normal sex. You know, sometimes he wants to bury his deep in your... And you have to comply to keep your man. Or he might run off with the secretary, like your dad did. You know, it's not fun all the time being a woman and having to take his cheesy in your mouth and hold him there until he all over your face. But it's just another part of being a woman. You know, drunk wicks whiskey breath in your face as he shoves a nightstick in your... And beats you senselessly. It's all part of growing into a wonderful woman here in the 50s. Occasionally, he might want to invite his friends over to watch you f*** the dog. Sure, you don't want to do these things, but you need a man because women are useless here in the 50s. Sometimes he finds films from various European countries and wants to try them out. Like taking a fistful of lard and just slamming it in. Yes, it hurts, Libby. But you'll keep your man. And always remember, swallow the... Never spit. Always swallow the... Spitters are quitters, Libby. 
bitters are quitters. <laughs> Some girls don't get the big breasts. They go to doctors and get implants and work at strip clubs where daddy goes to spend all his money in the champagne room getting jobs. That's okay as long as he doesn't bring home diseases. But he always seems to leave for the secretary, doesn't he? Just remember all this, Livy, is part of being a woman in the 50s. A fist in the face and a big in your... At least he doesn't have to watch you cry as your face is buried in the pillow, Livy. Tell your friends about this. You'll have to learn how to give during your... <laughs> Wasn't sure if I'd get away with saying it in this context. When a woman's time comes every month, she has to expel certain blood and tissue. At this time, her can't be used for that. So you'll have to learn how to suck a... like a champ. Okay, Libby, stop crying now and pulling your hair out in clumps and learn how to be a woman. During the time of expelling this tissue, a man may have to learn to earn his red wings, or what we call crime scene sex. Your little bed's gonna look like Iwo Jima. <laughs> I remember the first time your father wanted to have sex with me during that time. Well, let's just say the bed looked like Omaha Beach on D-Day. <laughs> That's when you have to learn how to either roll over or take a shot of to the face. Libby. And then there's threesomes, Libby. <laughs> threesomes are fun, 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 Libby. Just don't let photographers catch you on the steps of the court. Libby, put your goddamn clothes back on. I hope that helps you, Libby. Now go to the pool and tell your rag little friends. Well, that was a long clip, Rick. That was the lost clip, Opie. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Being a woman in the 50s. Right. Sounds tough. <laughs> Thank God things have changed. <laughs> All right. <Yeah. laughs> hey, Kathy, what's up? Hey, guys, how you doing? Pretty hey. good. Listen, I have three kids, two of which are daughters, eight and five. And let me tell you, when it comes time for me to explain this whole thing to them, yeah. the only thing I'm going to be able to have in my mind is this bit you guys did, and they are not going to take me serious at all. No? No. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I like the old learn it on the streets method. You well, know, I, it seems to work the best. I grew up in a house of five five girls, plus my mother. And let me tell you, my mother never sat us down and told us anything even related to that tape. We all yeah. learn from each other. All right. Thank all you, right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right. Let them learn, yeah, let them learn out at Hunt's Point <laughs> when they did the hooker special. <laughs> uh. Ramona. What's up, Ramona? Uh, Ramona. I just wanted to thank both of you for the sex education I never got at home. Thank you so much. I don't think I would have gotten it better if I even was up at Hunts Point. Well, that last clip was pretty much the most accurate one we've heard so far. Well, see, I, I'm having problems too, my man. Any a clue? I guess most of it was deep down. I mean, you know, it's always worth a shot. Yeah. All right. Thank you. There goes Ramona. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> girls made a show underwear at school dance, Anthony. This is going to be a big story tomorrow. L.A. Angry parents demanded the resignation of a California high school vice principal Tuesday because she lifted the skirts of teenage girls at a dance in front of men and male classmates to make sure they were wearing appropriate underwear. So she lifts it to make sure it's appropriate? What's appropriate? Uh, I think she was looking for thongs. She didn't want thongs? Or... <laughs> 
Uh, let's read on, read on here. Parents at uh, Rancho High School in suburban San Diego say the vice principal, Rita Wilson. Rita Wilson? That's... That's Tom, That's Tom Hanks' Hanks's wife, wife. Is, is lifting up skirts, or is it just a similar name? Made the girls prove that they were not wearing thong underwear before they were allowed into the dance on Friday. Ah. They had a lineup, and she lifted all their skirts up in front of everyone. Eh? In front of everyone? This, uh, this stuff is in the paper all the time. It just kind of hot me. now. Now it's kind of hot. Uh, in some cases, said Rancho Bernardo, parent Kim Teal, girls also were made to partially undress if Wilson or another teacher suspected that they weren't wearing bras. Wow. Who comes up with these ideas and thinks it's going to just be fine? Like, this will be a great thing. We'll just uh, get all the girls online, make them undress, lift their skirts up. And, uh, boy, the parents are going to love this because we're making sure they're wearing the right panties. The right panties. No, people are going to freak out, and you're going to get fired. These girls feel violated. Of course they do. Uh, said Teal, whose daughter Rebecca, a sophomore, was asked about her underwear, but escaped a search after telling Wilson that she was not wearing a thong. One girl just cried after having to tell her father this story. She was hiding her head in a sweatshirt. After I hear while, that was little Libby because uh, as she lifted the skirt, she was wearing that big ridiculous belt at the porch, porch swing. <laughs> the porch swing. <laughs> she was checking for porch swings. Porch swings. After a while, the girls finally got the idea that they shouldn't say thong when they were asked. Then it goes on. Oh, because they said, "What are you wearing?" And yeah. she said thong, and then they'd look. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sounds like Rita was getting a little kind of kind of hot. Teachers also checked several boys who were wearing toga-style costumes. And girls were often asked about their bras. I just got a call from one mom who said her daughter was wearing a poodle skirt and an off-the-shoulder top, and a teacher reached right out and grabbed the front of it and pulled it down to check. Oof. Oh, man, these people are screwed. Totally. Stupid. 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 <laughs> People are so funny, man, with what? the instant feedback. What? And Libby, if you're laying in bed and won't give it up and two guys are next to the you, just have them <laughs> off with each other. Hold on, it sounds better with the music. Oh, that's a different one. Yeah, it's, no, it's track nine, I believe. Yeah, but it went to eight. Oh. And remember, Libby... If you're with two men laying in bed, named Norton and Voss, and you won't give it up, just have them off and flip a coin. Remember, the loser gets to you. Sex is fun. You know what you're making down there, Libby? Hot soup. Hot soup. Remember, Libby, always wear a hat. <laughs> All right. Ha <laughs> <laughs>